Hi, and welcome to another edition of Untold Stories of Berks County Artists. I want to say thank you so much to the Berks Arts Council, the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts, and the Why I'm Missing Foundation for making this series possible here on The People Chronicles. My name is Joe Painter, and with me this afternoon is Rohan Cambridge. Hi. Hi, Joe. Thanks How are for you? joining us. Great. What do you think of this? You painted this. I did. So your medium, and I asked you this in, in honesty and broadcasting, I asked you if you did oils, and you said, no, this is acrylic. Why yeah. acrylics? You like, you like acrylics. I like acrylic because it's quick, it dries fast, and I don't have to spend a lot of time waiting on the, the medium to dry. So you can go into it, put in your bold colors, and move on. <laughs> wow, you just said something I never thought about. I'm not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Put in your bold colors and move on. So mm -hmm. is that the way you do all of your paintings? Bold first? Yeah, you kind of just um, blotching the colors mm -hmm. and piece by piece you add your layers, you add your details later. But with oil you have to wait. It's, it's more of a longer process. I find acrylic to be easier uh, as far as working in layers. It, it's just that it dries faster. Um, you don't have to spend that time that you would waiting on the paint to dry. You can go on to your next project. So as I'm listening to you, Rohan, I'm hearing, mm -hmm. you know, blocking and layering and blotching and, and bold colors <laughs> first. Yeah. Did you study art? Or did you learn? How, how it's, did you it's, I'm self-taught. You're self-taught? Yes. How did you learn this terminology? Because clearly there is an art to art. Yes. So how did you learn this? Well, I just listen to other artists, listen to information. You hear different things and step by step you just know what the, the, the world of art and how to talk. and It's not complicated. <laughs> if you're talented, I suppose, yeah, it's not and for me, that's another story. Yeah. So how did you get started? I mean, does this go back to when you were a child, you loved to draw, or what was the trigger for you? Okay, for me, it was, it was more of a therapeutic type of um, um, things that I used to do in my spare time. Because, you know, as a child, yeah. I had a great imagination, and with that came, you know, Kind of like your mind wanders off when you're thinking about things. You just start thinking about it a little bit too deeper and you're, you're trying to stop thinking, like turn your mind off. So what I did was I just drew until I just found myself in that zone where I just turn everything off. And, and I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't stop until everything else was silent. So I, would, I was able to calm my mind down and uh, sharpen my skills that That's way. interesting. So you used it to quiet your mind. Yes. So if you were very anxious or if you were sad, if you were feeling a strong emotion, whatever it was, yeah. you funneled it into drawing. Yes. You were a doodler? No, I was uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. In school, were you doodling? No, <laughs> no I, I guess I was a little bit obsessed with detail. And oh, okay. The, the more challenge challenging the figure was the more fun it was for me to get the details so and that was a part of the therapeutic process it takes a great deal of concentration to just get all the fine detail and by just focusing your mind on that you silence whatever it is the the multiple thoughts I Whatever is that. coming through that you don't want to come through, that you want to channel out. And I, I, I don't use that word channel as like a new age term. It's just like mm -hmm. tuning your TV. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, mm -hmm. you know, put your <laughs> brain to the right <laughs> frequency or the right, the right channel that you want your brain to go in. And so that's what I did. So, and from that therapy comes this. Yes. And this is quite beautiful. Yes. Can we talk about this a moment? This is, uh, it captured my eye right away. Yes. And in fact, you have this on display with some other portraits. Yes. Tour portraits and another wildlife yes. photo here at the studios at 505 Penn Street. Yes. And this one always just jumps out at me because it's peaceful to me. Yes. Very peaceful. 
What was your inspiration? I mean, why, why did you draw this? Because you also this, have portraits. Okay, this I did, we were putting on a show, I think it was in 2014, the, the spring, and it was about our planet Earth. Oh. Okay. And so we, we did this whole series of painting that was gonna be geared towards um, renewing the environment, Mm -hmm. you know, more um, environmentally uh, uh, consciousness, like just thinking about what can we do to help the environment, how not to litter and things like that. So right. with that, other artists came, um, became involved with it. And uh, this is one of the paintings that came out of that. I like that, especially when you describe it that way, because yeah. you've depicted what we don't see. Yeah. On the surface, we just see the ocean. Yeah. We don't see the, the wonderful world. This one is called Ocean Blue. Okay. <laughs> ocean <laughs> Blue. And, you know, I, I, I didn't think too deeply about it. I just call it Ocean Blue. It was you know, more blue is the major color, and it's about the ocean. So well, ocean in this blue. case, you described where your inspiration came from because yeah. you were doing a show to save the earth and about the environment. Yeah. Where where else do you draw information or inspiration? Inspiration. Yeah. Oh wow! Well, yeah. I was thinking about that today. <laughs> For me, my uh, the the inspiration comes from how when I do something, how is it going to help others? Oh. What can I do to change the the mood and and, and, and hopefully to make it better? You know. So. That's the first inspiration, I believe, that comes from God. Uh, secondly, um, it's from my own mind. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's why I personally am careful about what I watch, what I, uh, what I engage in. So that that's whatever is coming. Yeah. It is. Whatever I'm projecting through my art, yep. I need to feel good about it. Like, if... if if I don't feel as though I'm going to project the right information or the right imagery or the right visual to others, I won't do it. Or I will just take a time out from doing art because I have to feel good about myself. Um, it's like I was having a conversation with a, a friend of mine and he said to me, "And you know, uh, friend, it, it, this is not about you, so it, I'm just using this as an example. And so he was saying to me, you know, to be honest, I, I was feeling a little bit down because of the uh, location that I'm in, like, uh, frankly, because of Reading, he said. And I said, look, you know, you're, it, there's always going to be something that's going to get you down. Mm -hmm. Don't let wherever you are get you down. Be the inspiration. Mm -hmm. Inspire others. Right. You know, right. be the change you want to see in the world, okay? So inspire Reading, inspire people to move in the direction that you feel they should be going because your heart is clean, your mind is clean. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's how I think. These are very wise yes. words that you're sharing and, and you're saying, you know, your art comes from within. So you want yeah. to make sure that what you start with, you're careful about what you consume because yeah. once you consume it, it's there. Yeah. And you want to make sure that what comes out, you know, it comes from the mind. They are wise words. You've shared them here. I appreciate that. Who was your mentor? Where did you learn this? Oh, wow. Um, my mentor. Or mentors. You know, <laughs> Maybe you have multiple. I have, I have yeah. several. You know, yeah. my first was my uncle. Okay. He's, he's in, in Jamaica still. That's where I'm from. Is he a painter? He's a painter. He's a okay. um, uh, sculpture. He's sculpturer. <laughs> he does, he works in ceramic. He's multi-talented. He's a teacher. So oh, wow. my inspiration came from him when I was a child mm -hmm. and, and he was going to art school. He went and um, uh, did a, uh, some, some pottery work and uh, he had his, his, well, it was more like a, a sculpture he did. And he had one of his pieces home and I thought maybe I could improve it. Oh, no. <laughs> so I, uh, <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> Uh, I mean, I, I, you know, being a child, you don't think about sure. consequences. You're just having fun. So, you know, I'm working on the eyes. I'm like, I, I think these eyes should be a little different, maybe a little <laughs> bit wider. 
<laughs> you know. <laughs> Uh, he wasn't very happy this when he came. This didn't end well, did it? No, no, no. And this, he had a deadline, so I mean, oh. he didn't smack me or anything. And I oh. kept wondering, why didn't he? <laughs> like, <laughs> because but, he loved you. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> The best uncle ever. <laughs> that is a that is a very yeah. cool story. So if you come across, and I'm sure you do, just yeah. by nature of listening to you, you you must come across other young artists, and yes. you have the opportunity to be the mentor. What what advice is is good words to share with a young artist yeah. trying to to make it to make this their profession? Yes, I would say believe in yourself, mm -hmm. believe in yourself, and approach it with passion. You have the ability to become whoever you want to become, to, to, to fulfill your dream, to make your dreams come true. Just listen to that voice within yourself and, and go with that. But you must believe in yourself and you must approach it with passion. And uh, you will have challenges, you will have discouragement, um, but it's like with anything you do. It's just that in this world, the, the art profession isn't, hasn't um, encouraged as like, you know, other fields like technology or True. engineering True. And, and other fields. But, you know, you, it's powerful that you can inspire others and make Through a difference art. in the world and make a living for yourself. They're good words. They're good okay. words for young artists and young anybody and, and adults as well. So that's mm -hmm. very wise. We're going to wrap this up, but not till I find out. <laughs> because this is the untold stories <laughs> okay. of Brooks County artists. So what's one thing or a thing that you yeah. might share about Rohan Cambridge that most people don't know? Yeah. The one thing is I almost drowned when I was a kid. Yes. I was... I was out swimming alone, and my grandmother told me, don't go swimming in the canal by yourself. You but were quite the child, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was very <laughs> adventurous. <laughs> you almost drowned? I almost drowned. How did that change your life? Uh, well, let me tell you how it happened. Okay. You know, I, I, I kind of dove into this uh, waterfall, and mm -hmm. it sucked me under. And when I was down there, I, I, I was trying to fight my way out, and I couldn't. And then... I just decided, well, this is going to be it. I'm going to take my last breath oh my and gosh. I'm going to, you know, die. Like, and I said, God, you know, I'm, I'm praying and, you know, if you save me, I'll serve you. And, and I, I, I kept thinking that. And there was a moment when I felt like I, I couldn't breathe anymore. And I, 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 I meant I, I had to breathe because I couldn't hold my breath anymore. Right, right. And... I felt like I actually took that breath and the water just shoved me out and I got to the surface and I said, thank God I'm going to serve you for the rest of my life. Of course, I, I wasn't too obedient with that always, but that, that's been one of the things that kept me going, kept me thinking about the Lord and that I need to serve him with all I do with my work. And so I have a website that I'm working on. It's mm -hmm. called paradisedesigns.net. You're going to find out more about how am I going to use my work to serve God through that website and things that I do within the community. It's a tragic story, but beautiful. Yes. Because I, you were not able to hold your breath, and it sounds like you just felt that surge of breath and out you went as soon as you made that promise? Yes, yes. Wow. wow. And you're yeah. doing it. I'm doing it. Praise God he saved you. Because look Praise what God. you are doing. Thank you. And the, and the website, one more time, is? ParadiseDesigns.net. I'm sure we'll yeah, see I, a I, lot more there. I do have another website that what is I it? can share. Please. DestinationParadise.info. Uh, and we're going to be working on a lot of community gardens and different things that uh, each individual and, and people in the community can participate in. So my, I'm very inspired by paradise and, and, and going there. And, uh, you know, the, the, with paradise, sorry, <laughs> I'm mixing up the, the two here. With paradise designs, mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the sayings is, uh, bring the inspiration home. Take a little touch of heaven on earth. Like, get a touch of heaven on earth. That's 
saying that we're, you know, fine tuning, but finding it's there. a little piece of yeah. heaven here. Yes, and sharing like, it. Yeah, sharing it. Yeah. Like yeah. whatever you see outside, you can, you can, that can be paradise for you. The beauty that you see around us mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. is remind us of, of paradise. You have and certainly taken your God given talents yeah. and you are giving them back. You are okay. serving God. Thank you. We're lucky. Thank you. Thank you. And now you know Rohan Cambridge. Thanks for having me.